you're going on a journey, a journey through memory. All you have to do is follow my voice. Salutations, everyone. I'm Nero Bikoshi, and welcome to another Nero at the Movies. Today I'm reviewing uh, Reminiscence, and it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> but I think I have more to say about it, more than the movie Beckett had, where, where it, there was a few things to say about it, but... Um, fun thing I was researching about this movie because I wanted to know who the director was. The director for this is a person named Lisa Joy. Lisa Joy is the wife of Jonathan Nolan, Christopher Nolan's uh, younger brother. Uh, and she has written episodes for like, you know, Pushing Daisies directed and written episodes for uh, Westworld and if I'm trying to remember correctly she's also writing uh, uh, she's also one of the writers for the new uh, Fallout series that's coming I think next year the um, if you don't know that's there's going to be a show based on the uh, Fallout series, which is sounds pretty cool. And she's part of it. And, you know, I'm interested. I mean, I never seen much of Lisa Joy's work. This is her directional debut of a film that, uh, theatrically, since she's been doing only, like, TV shows and such. But, you know, I say it's a pretty good start for her directional debut in the uh, in in movies, and you know, I am looking forward to whatever she does next. To this movie, it does feel like it is a uh, like it is something that Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan would have made uh, <laughs> together, but you know, it's not two hours longer than it needs to be. It's it keeps it tight with its story and doesn't need to drag on long. The movie does a great job with building the world, but not that much. The world is like, all you know is it's like drowned in water because the water flood the earth. So basically this movie's kind of like the movie Waterworld. Only without Kevin Cosner and... It's not over the top. It's just a straightforward neo-noir sci-fi mystery thriller. And I'm a sucker for those kind of movies that are mysteries and noir kind of type movies that has the main character uh, brooding and uh, narrating throughout the film about the, about the world that he lives in and, and its setting and him describing what's going on. I do, I am a sucker for that, of narration in noir films, and especially movies that are mysteries that take place in like the future of sci-fi world. And this movie is kind of like that, does the whole thing about like entering the past and nostalgia becoming, you know, a big thing which is not too far off to um, the world today where people do love nostalgia. And nostalgia is an addictive thing of the past. And this movie does show it, but not that much to like show it more. They just show a few things and that's it. That's different. Mainly memories of people, of a distant memory of them, uh, missing loved ones or you know, uh, taking back to a time where they were raising their kid when they were just a baby and all that. And just memories of like helping them find something in their past that they lost or what they miss back then. 
and wishing they could uh, go back to it, but sadly they can only experience it through the uh, the drink, the thing called the reminiscence. Yes. And it kind of does sound like a Nolan uh, story because that's kind of like with Inception, where Inception, it's about going into the dreams and, and experiencing your dreams of what you have or, you know, the most dangerous thing, which uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Dom Cobb, where he, where he uses memories for an in inception to uh, experience the lost time he had with his dead wife and wanting to go back in there to re- reminisce old days. And that's what he does in that movie too. And Hugh Jackman's kind of the same here also, going back to memories of a loved one that he cared about that is gone and wish that they he had more time with this person. And it's very tragic in a way and sad because it's like something that I could relate to with Hugh Jackman where it's like, would I sacrifice my life and stay in the past and relive those memories again and never look back into the future, never go back and just stay in the reminiscence? And the sad part is I would have done the same thing as him. Like if I was in that situation, I would be stuck there forever. But I don't think <laughs> him being stuck in there because this... <laughs> This one scene at the end of the movie where you see him in the reminiscence and he's like an old man yet his body still looks muscular and bulky like he's still young young Hugh Jackman with muscles. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, totally. He's an old man, but he's still jacked. <laughs> I'm like, yes, old man Hugh Jackman has the same body type as Wolverine when he was young. I'm like, there's no way in hell that is an old man's body with that old man makeup that Hugh Jackman has on him. <laughs> it's so like, huh? <laughs> I was, I was very interested in this movie. Uh when I saw the trailers for it before I watch a movie with my family, because I always set up a bunch of trailers before I, uh, you know, before, like, we watch the movie, like, to have that experience, like, we're in the movie theater again. And I always randomly pick, like, what's the new trailers? What are the new movies that are coming out? And what movies haven't got released yet? And then... I picked trailers, I saw Reminiscence, I picked that trailer, once I immediately saw that trailer, I was like, this sounds like an interesting premise, people people making money off of nostalgia, and <laughs> also it's a mystery thriller of someone that's trying to like piece together the puzzle of things of what happened to this woman he fell in love with, and why did she disappear, and what happened to her, and he has to go and piece out clues together and wonder what happened and try to figure out what what's going on and why did she leave this person he fell in love with and i was so interested in that but sadly the whole nostalgia thing where they were making money off of it of people wanting to go back to the past it it felt like kind of an afterthought with the story mainly because like it happens only in the beginning of the film and then immediately it's discarded at that point especially like with stuff that I liked where they used the memories to like piece out clues to wonder what's going on what's going to happen it was an interesting concept of that but it's still like you know well for lack of a better word because (laughs) it's the title of the movie it's like very all puns aside reminiscent (laughs) to other 
mystery films or other sci-fi films that have done this before. I can't name them off the top of my head. But again, I'm thinking of Inception also with the whole, you know, thing about, like, uh, of Cobb, DiCaprio's character, going back to his using Inception to go back to the memories with his dead wife and reliving the past even though it's dangerous to use memories when you are using inception because it could fuck up the job in a way and it's kind of like that and because since it is like that addiction that um DiCaprio's character also had in inception and it was very similar to that with Hugh Jackman like trying to like relive the past and everything and it's not bad it's handled well Hugh Jackman's acting does sell the performance of a man who's desperate to uh find the woman he loved again and it does show that desperation does show that his acting is very great in it he does sell the performance man is a good actor I loved him in a lot of films that he's done that has done things like that before especially with like um the prestige where he lost his like lover from a magician accident in that movie and he sells the performance when he can when he's depressed when he's sad when he lost something of his that he cared about it shows a lot in this film and his performance especially when he finds out uh when he when if i if you don't if you want to see the movie i don't want to spoil it but like (laughs) when he finds out something bad happened you see like him breaking down into tears crying yelling and hugh jackman just owns it like you believe that this man has lost someone he cared about and it's very (laughs) Um, it's very good, and I think Hugh Jackman does carry the movie with his performance, showing that he is that determined man that is looking for answers and wondering what's going on, what happened, why did she do the things that she did in this film, and I did enjoy that, but sadly the movie just feels all too familiar, and what, well, on movies that have done this before, and it's not bad for that you can tell there was passion in this movie from what lisa joy was writing and what she was coming across to on making and you can see that but all the things about the movie it doesn't do well enough to show more about this world it just tells you through the narration of hugh jackman saying like the waters began to flood and There's also, like, some corruption in the city. Everyone does not like the day. They're all nocturnal now in Miami. Uh, They like the night more, which is pretty cool. (laughs) Well, that means everyone goes to school in the nighttime. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) If I want to be nocturnal, I'd rather be nocturnal for the ways of, like, saying, like, no, I'd rather just be with friends have fun in the night the neon lights and everything i don't know the town doesn't look that nice or interesting that much i mean it does look cool being a put like a post-apocalyptic like world where everything is like run down and destructive and everything but i feel like there could have been more to it creatively instead of just being a flooded town I feel like they should have done more with the world and make it look uh, something different instead of just being there's water everywhere in this town and that's it. And I feel very like um, cheated over that because I feel like there could have been more you could have done making the world look interesting. But instead it's just a flooded city and that's pretty much it it's just water and a city is drowning in it 
and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I really wish there was more to it because the posters for this movie were like pretty beautiful and very <sighs> to avoid it similar. <laughs> very similar to a uh, Blade Runner like 2049's poster which I but you know this movie's not a Blade Runner it's not a it's not that much of a sci-fi film. It's more of a like dystopian future where everyone is thinking that there's nothing better in the future. The past was always the best and the future is bleak and depressing. Everyone wants to go back to a more simpler time and that's pretty much it. I mean, if I had to live in that world too, <laughs> yeah, I would totally use the reminiscence to like bring me to a better days where it wasn't that bleak and depressing which probably is the point why the town does not look that interesting to look at it, it's because of that reason i really wish they delved on with that creative idea of it because seeing that the reminiscence was used for detective work and used for police's police work but then later used for you know nostalgia purposes it kind of makes you wonder more about the world and how much they could have expanded more on this idea and could have made it its own thing its own interesting thing but instead it's just a mystery thriller that we've seen before of a person looking for someone that they cared about and then finding out that it was kind of pointless but at least you know who was the killer who was the murderer who was the person behind all the corruption and everything at least you get to find that out but you still are left unsatisfied at the end because you want everything to be happy and that's the thing and I think that is the point of the movie it's talking about like there's no such thing as happy endings at all but it makes it feel like when he goes back into the past that's his happy ending is the beginning of things being positive for him and that is uh, being back to someone he cared about that's no longer with him and it shows a lot in this movie about it that the only way you can have a happy ending is just creating it on your own. <laughs> own. Which is kind of very sad because he does talk about to the person he loves in the movie. Hugh Jackman tells the story and I can't remember the character's name but it's an old uh, mythology about a guy who lost his lover and then he makes a deal with the devil and begs with him, begs to him that he bring his lover back and the devil agrees but he can only see her until they escape so that means he can't look behind so he can't look behind him to see if she's there to see if she's uh to see if she's actually following him but she can't say a word to acknowledge she's following him and he doesn't believe that she's actually following him so once he was like close to the exit he looks back and sees that she's there and then he loses her forever but Hugh Jackman lies to his you know girlfriend and says like hey they actually got out of there together and then they lived happily ever after even though that was a lie but he wanted to make a story to, and make up the happy ending that she asked for you know and she got that happy ending but sadly that happy ending uh isn't real and you can just judge by saying like there is like symbolism to it because of the ending and i'm just gonna say the spoilers right here uh hugh jackman's girlfriend she dies <laughs> And it's kind of like there is symbolism to it or like it is reminiscent. I said it fucking again. But uh, he, where he 
basically makes a deal with the devil. And the devil in this situation is basically the police where he admits to like hurting a guy or potentially murdering him because after he finds out the guy who uh, does that did kill his girlfriend, he finds out about it and then he fucking like puts him in like probably an epileptic seizure after forcing him to relive his worst fear and nightmare and worst memory through the reminiscence, probably psychologically damaging him and also making him have brain damage in the process also probably. And he then makes a deal with the cops that like, yes, I don't get to walk, but he chooses his punishment which he does say at the end of the movie, like I want, I re- at least I would choose. I know what the punishment I would choose, and his punishment was reliving the past, and being with the one he loves, and that's the punishment he's gonna have is staying in the reminiscence forever, reliving the past, reliving his, the happier days in his life, and that's basically, his happy ending. He's the character in the story that he told his girlfriend, but he made up the story that they lived happily ever after. And in a way, he does get that ending, and it's the same way, because he sees that um, that he is uh, that he's more happier there, even though it is a punch punishment. It is a torture because he can't change anything about it. He cannot uh, fix the past. He cannot manipulate it to be better. He can only relive the happier memories. And the sad thing is, he loves those memories. And he'll never escape them because that's where he feels happy. Not in the future, but in the past. And that's why I feel like I would have chose the same option as Hugh Jackman. If I had the opportunity to go back to the past and relive the happier days of my life, if not as a kid, but but the days where I actually feel like I was with someone I cared about and loving the days I was with them, I would have totally took that opportunity and actually be with them for the entirety of my life until I die with those memories. And it's sad, yes, but I honestly would have chose the same route as him, even though that's bad. You should look towards the future. You should forget it. The past is past, and you got to do that. But seeing is that you're living in a horrible future, (laughs) you can't. But then again, his friend that worked with him in the at the job of the reminiscence that they did together she went back to the future she took back her life and went to uh be with her daughter and then she became a grandmother and that's her future she said like nope i'm not gonna look back in the past i'm gonna go to the future be with my daughter and actually start a start making happier memories in the future with them and she does and that's nice that's sweet how it shows the the con- comparisons of that where Hugh Jackman is more happier in the past while he wants his friend to be happier in the future because he knows that his friend has a second chance to be with her daughter while Hugh Jackman doesn't have that second chance ever. And that's pretty depressing, honestly. And I did like that, but... The movie was okay. <laughs> I mean, I look. I mean, you can tell there was interesting things that the director wanted to do, and actually does a great job with them. I can't say that she uh, was lost in her own hubris and thinking she was sniffing the fumes, saying, "Oh, it means stuff. It's symbolic and deep, and you guys don't understand it." I think she just made a good movie that she thinks would have been great but sadly it fell off the map and just became just an unoriginal in a sense uh mystery thriller because you know 
I don't think I'm gonna watch this movie again. I don't think I'm gonna remember it or pop it in again just to be curious because there are other movies that do it better and do it well. Reminiscence does do it fine, but you know, it's a movie that you've seen a hundred times before and you kind of wish there was something new, something different about it. And I do love the concept of going back to the past, to the dreams and everything. I do love that concept, but I just wish that it was done better. And I think Inception does it better with the whole dream aspect. Like, like when Cobb says, like, if you use memories, you lose your perception of reality. And I think that does work out better because it's like, you want it to be a memory. You want it to be the past. You want that dream to be real and you want it to just work <laughs> out and you wish things were different. And I feel like, and I feel like Inception, it's left to interpretation more because you feel like, did he escape the dream or did he uh, lost his perception of reality because he finally got to see his kids again? Or is he still trapped in the dream? That is something that is very uh, interesting to think about. Because it leaves you with questions. It leaves you thinking more about the movie. It leaves a bigger impact of telling you what's going to happen. What's is Was it a happy ending or was it a sad ending? It's left to your in interpretation of it. Well, Reminiscence is very straightforward with its plot and straightforward with its message and there's nothing wrong with it wanting it to be straight to the point in what it's trying to represent there's nothing wrong with that i just feel like the movie could have benefited more if it was a movie left in interpretation like left in like a whole like mystery that you can only figure out yourself and you can piece together and say like maybe he actually is in a better reality or maybe he's in or maybe he's not not i mean maybe <laughs> i don't know like it's something that i feel like reminiscence could have been a lot left to your own interpretation of how the movie ends or how it goes like i feel like it could have worked out well like that but it sadly didn't and that's very unfortunate it the movie's all right i give it a 5.6 out of 10 ish <laughs> kind of 5.6 ish out of 10 ish <laughs> It's okay. It's not bad. I not. I don't think I'm gonna be able to see it again because I don't think there's anything to look back on to say like, oh wow, I didn't notice this. Oh wow, it just feels like a movie you will only watch once. It's not like with Knives Out, and Knives Out is a mystery film. But Knives Out, something like Knives Out, or something like the movie Get Out, or Us. Even though I'm listing out movies where Us was okay, Get Out was pretty good, Knives Out, really good. Uh, it's, it's the reason why I compare to those movies is that I feel like those movies had something going for it. Or like an Edgar Wright movie. I feel like those movies I give examples for is because they give you something to look at. Something to like look back on that you never noticed uh, before and then you find out about it and usually it's like it's usually when movies are doing like foreshadowing or movies that do like uh, simple hidden clues to tell you what something about who the character really is and they don't but they don't tell you it like in your face they just tell you through different key clues that you couldn't that you couldn't uh uh figure out in your first viewing but when you watch your second viewing of it you start to realize oh that person was probably lying or something like the scene where um 
uh, Ana de Amas's like friend who she says like, hey, I've been calling you. I've been worried about you or anything. And then that friend's mother says a different tale entirely, which is a lie because they clearly didn't give a shit about her in the first place except for one person in the family. You don't notice that at first when you watch the movie, but when you watch it a second time, you're like, oh, bitch was lying to her. Because <laughs> it does make you think more when you look back at a movie and you see it. Reminiscence doesn't do that, and I wish it did. I wish it did give you something to look back on and find pieces of clues that they sprinkled in the movie that they put in in dialogue that you don't notice at first and then you take a second look at it and you're like oh my god i didn't notice that at first i watched reminiscence through for one time and already i pieced the clues together over the first half and also predicted what was gonna happen in the movie because I've seen it so many times in other better movies. Even bad ones I've seen it done already. If mystery thrillers were in neo-noir movies that done the same thing, that done the same shtick. And Reminiscence doesn't do anything new to that. I think Reminiscence could have like that old idea and I feel like yeah this old idea like this whole story cliche that you've already seen a million times but do something creative with it take a different spin on it there's like your whole like gimmick of saying like oh they can relive the past through this machine thing can get you so far it can get you so it can get you so little far in the film for people to be interested in it to the point where everyone's just going to be bored of it and say like i already know what's going to happen as much as i enjoyed a few things about the movie that was interesting i just feel like i feel like it was giving me little like I, I praise Hugh Jackman's performance, but that's it. It was the performance that captivated me into watching it. If it was any other actor that wasn't Hugh Jackman or an actor that had that capability to keep you invested with their performance and how they delve into the character pretty perfectly, it it's... If it was any other actor, you would probably just be like, I already know what's going to happen. Nothing's interesting about it. I'm just going to tune out. Like, you're just going to be bored of it because you already know what's going to happen. You already do that. And I feel like Hugh Jackman being there is something that will keep audiences invested because he does a damn good job with his, uh, with the material he's given in this film. <laughs> And I applaud that because, you know, he is a skilled actor and, yes, a Broadway star as well. <laughs> but again, I feel like Reminiscence could have at least have help if Lisa Joy probably should have, like, asked for, like, help or assistance or a second opinion at least to spice up the story more. Hell, she could have probably asked her husband, Jonathan Nolan, for some help on what could I do to improve the story more. Like, he could have probably done something. I mean, I know Jonathan Nolan helps Christopher Nolan in all the movies he's done, except for Interstellar and Tenet, which Nolan, Christopher Nolan, like, wrote and direct himself while his brother didn't do nothing. And, you know, sometimes Christopher Nolan does need help from his brother from time to time to bring the emotion home in his films. While Christopher Nolan thinks about the spectacle and the, and the, uh, and the whole entire world around it, which is mainly his, uh, you know, thing. Because he is a visionary director and Nolan shows that with what he does with movies. And I feel like... His brother helps with the emotion and characters in his films as well to help 
bring out life into the movies with the interesting uh, characters that they bring. And I don't think Christopher Nolan did that well enough to bring emotion with Tenet. I mean, Tenet's fine. I love it. I do enjoy that film. It's pretty good. I can never say a Christopher Nolan movie is bad, even though my least favorite Nolan film is Interstellar. And I know a lot of people like that movie, but for me, I just think it's just meh. <laughs> Reminiscence could have been better. I, that's all I have to say. It could have been better, could have done something more, put more meat to it that could make it feel interesting, that could keep you like having a more guessing and also like put things into your own like interpretation of things and make things more interesting and see everyone else's different opinion and different perception of how the movie, what the movie was trying to tell them. And I think that would have been pretty good. Like, it is a movie to be, like, they, it could have been a movie that everyone would discuss and they'll share their opinions on it about, oh, what do you think happened? Oh, what do you think the ending really means or what the whole point of it was? Like, that would have been cool to explore more. But sadly, it was just straightforward. So if you want to watch Reminiscence, you can. If you have an HBO Max account, it's free. You don't have to pay extra for uh, anything. And you'll just have an enjoyable enough time. But it is a movie that you'll only want to watch once and that's it like i don't see this movie being a movie that you'd be like oh man i want to watch it again i want to watch it again it's just a movie you'll watch one time and that's it i mean it was a good effort but i feel like there could have been more to it so yeah 5.6 maybe 5.4 or 5.5 somewhere there <laughs> somewhere between that like ish is level you know out of 10 and yeah that was reminiscence thank you guys for watching if you like this video awesome that's cool I'm, at least i would know that there are people watching this and actually uh loving my reviews and everything i know i get a bit on tangents i know i kind of constantly say things on repeat and people will try to skip things just to move forward but you know this is my raw unfiltered thoughts about it so anyway thank you guys for watching and i'll see you wolf pack later ciao darlings ow, ow, ow. <laughs>